the following e-tutorial will recount a brief history of psychology at Howard University. Howard is a federally chartered, private, historically black university, or HBCU. It's located in Washington, D.C. Howard was founded in 1867 by white and black abolitionists and was planned as a training facility for black ministers. Later, it was a university for freedmen and their children. The school was named after a Civil War hero named General Oliver O. Howard, a white man who was serving as the commissioner of the Freedmen's Bureau. The Bureau was a U.S. government agency that aided freed blacks. As one of the nation's most distinguished historically black universities, Howard University has a mission to provide an educational experience of exceptional quality to students of high academic potential with particular emphasis on educational opportunities for promising black students, and to attract and sustain a group of faculty who are uh, committed to the development of distinguished and compassionate graduates, and they do this through their teaching and research. And they're also committed to the quest for solutions to human and social problems in the United States and throughout the world. Howard became the leading black university providing graduate training in psychology. I'm going to go through a brief timeline of some of the major events. In 1867, Howard University was founded. In 1899, the first psychology course was offered. It was listed under the philosophy department and called psychology, the briefer course. It is likely that William James's psychology briefer course, published in 1892, was the text for this class. This was the only psychology class offered until 1906 when other courses were added. These additional courses include general psychology, advanced psychology, social psychology, and abnormal psychology. In 1924, Albert Beckham arrived and was the first person with a degree in psychology to teach at Howard. He had a master's in psychology from Ohio State University. He taught all of the psychology courses. The courses focus on applied psychology, mostly in the service of teacher education. He also established the first psychology lab at Howard, which focused on intelligence differences in children of different ethnicities and aimed to refute the claim that black children were inferior. He left Howard after just four short years to complete his PhD at NYU. The Department of Psychology was formally founded in the fall of 1928 by Francis Cecil Sumner, who is sometimes called the father of black psychology. As was common in many HBCUs, psychology courses were taught in the education and philosophy departments. Sumner believed that in order to properly train black psychologists, an independent department of psychology, separate from philosophy and education, was the utmost of importance of the utmost importance. Sumner was assisted in the department by Frederick Watts, a graduate student, and Max Minas, a psychology professor. These three formed the core of Howard's psychology department for the next 15 years. On April 30th, 1935, a new classroom building was opened, providing a space specifically for the psychology department. This was the only unit in any black institution at the time designed specifically for psychology, and it compared favorably with facilities at many of the leading institutions in the U.S. In 1939, Sumner outlined three objectives for the psychology department. The first objective was to service students preparing for various professional lines, such as business, education, law, medicine, religious, etc. A certain amount of scientific psychological knowledge is required for all of these professional lines, which involve the interplay of human beings. The second objective was to stress the cultural significance of psychology and to have this appeal to many students. Knowledge of psychology is important for the deeper understanding of literature, religion, philosophy, genius, mental derangement, and all other creations of the human mind. And the third objective was to prepare a few select students for the scientific pursuit of psychology in graduate study, leading to the master's and doctor's degree. 
In 1939, Mamie Phipps Clark completed her dissertation under the mentorship of Venus. It was entitled An Investigation of the Development of Consciousness of Distinctive Self in Preschool Children. And this was the beginning of the Clark and Clark doll studies, whose results played a role in the 1954 Supreme Court decision between Brown and the Board of Education that deemed segregated public schools illegal and mandated that public schools be desegregated. Both Mamie and her husband, Kenneth Clark, earned their bachelor's and master's degrees at Howard. Kenneth was largely influenced by Sumner and went on to become the first black president of the APA in 1970. The next event on the timeline is 1943, when the annual Gold Key Award was established for the Howard Senior completing a major in psychology with exceptional distinction. This award was later renamed the Dodson Award after its benefactor, Mrs. Willie Dodson. The purpose of the award was to provide incentive for achievement among students in the department. In 1947, Sumner announced that the enrollment for the year of 1946 to 1947 at both the undergraduate and graduate levels was the highest in the history of the psychology department. Enrollment at the undergraduate level was 40 psychology majors. And in 1949, 88 seniors graduated with a bachelor's in psychology. This influx of uh, psychology majors was reflective of the increased popularity of psychology as a major and of the exceptional training at Howard. Also in 1947, the Howard chapter of Psy Chi, which is the National Honorary Society for Psychology, was installed. This was the first chapter to be installed at a black school. In the fall of 1968, the doctoral program in psychology was formally founded and classes were revised to include full-time classes during the day. Prior to this time, training ended at the master's level and courses were taught at night. Training ended at the master's level because Sumner wanted students to seek training for their PhD elsewhere. Five new faculty were hired this year as well. Some of the faculty include Nissim Levy, Martha Medic and Sherman Ross. In 1972, the PhD graduate program in clinical psychology was founded. In 1980, the faculty at Howard grew once again. William Curtis Banks, a social psychologist and developmental psychologist. A. Wade Boykin, a, dev a developmental psychologist. Alfonso Campbell, a neuropsychologist, Jules Harrell, a personality psychologist, and Stanley Ridley, a clinical psychologist, joined the faculty. These new additions to the department allowed for graduate students to expand their training and to get training in social, developmental, personality psychology, and neuropsychology as well. Because Sumner was so influential in the psychology department at Howard, we'll spend a little time to learn about him. Francis Cecil Sumner was born in Pine Bluff, Arkansas on December 7, 1895. He received his elementary education in both Virginia and New Jersey. Because ethnic minorities were not allowed to attend high schools, Sumner educated himself. He had much help from his parents, including his father, who was also self-taught. At the age of 15, he was able to pass an entrance exam to Lincoln University. He graduated from Lincoln University, magna cum laude in philosophy, with special honors in English, Greek, and Latin. He enrolled at Clark University in the fall of 1915 to pursue a second Bachelor of Arts in English. After graduating from Clark in 1916, he decided to return to Lincoln University as a graduate student an instructor of psychology and German. Near the end of his first semester, he realized his desire to continue in the field of psychology and the need for further advanced training. After completing his master's from Lincoln, he was accepted as a doctoral student at Clark University under the mentorship of G. Stanley Hall. Although he was approved as a PhD candidate, he could not begin his doctoral dissertation 
because he was drafted into the army during World War I. Upon returning from the war, he re-enrolled in, in the doctoral program at Clark, and in 1920, his dissertation titled Psychoanalysis of Freud and Adler was accepted. Francis was the first African American to receive a PhD in psychology, and he was only 24 years old at the time of his graduation. In his career as a psychology professor at various institutions, Sumner managed to publish more than 45 articles, despite research agencies' refusal to provide him funding because of his color. His work focused on perception, advertising, and the psychology of religion. He also conducted work on how to refute racism and bias in the theories used to conclude the inferiority of African Americans. Sumner's work is thought to be a response to the Eurocentric methods of psychology. He also proposed strategies for the higher education of African American youth during segregation. Sumner chaired the psychology department at Howard until his death in 1954. All of this prolific work was very much influential in influencing the field of black psychology and many black psychologists to come afterwards. Unfortunately, Sumner passed away relatively young after suffering from a fatal heart attack while shoveling snow at his home in Washington, D.C. Sumner was described by former students as a low-keyed and very dedicated psychologist and also as very quiet and very unassuming, an individual who was brilliant with a tremendous capacity to make an analysis of an individual's gestalt. In summarizing the history of the psychology department at Howard, it can be concluded that psychology in the 1930s and 40s at Howard was influenced largely by Clark University and G. Stanley Hall through Sumner's teachings. During Sumner's tenure, Howard was deemed the Black Harvard and played a role in training influential Black psychologists. The department was also influenced by Max Minas, who mentored many master's students, including well-known and well-respected scholars such as Mamie Phipps Clark, Kenneth Clark, and James A. Dayton. Minas studied with Alfred Adler, E.G. Boring, Walter Hunter, Kurt Kafka, Wolfgang Kohler, and E.B. Titchener, so he was knowledgeable about a broad range of psychology topics and helped to train many of the younger, inspiring scholars. So throughout its existence, Howard has primarily been a teaching university, and research has not been the major mission. Fittingly, the most major accomplishment of the Howard Psychology Department has been the influence of professors in discovering, developing, and motivating talented students. Howard Psychology Department has most notably helped increase the number of black psychologists, influence policy and legislation pertaining to black education, such as Brown v. Board of Education, and has provided a foundation for generations of black psychologists to build from. It has produced many influential scholars, works, and the like. Thank you for listening. An excellent history of the Department of Psychology is chronicled by Hopkins and colleagues in a 1994 article in the Journal of the Washington Academy of Sciences. And Gunthry, 1998, provided a historical overview of the, the, of the department in the chapter on the production of black psychologists in his influential book, Even the Rat Was White, A Historical View of Psychology. Much of the information in this e-tutorial comes from these works. Feel free to take a look at those to get more information.